Hello, 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 everybody. Good morning. Let me just do an audio check. I'm just using the regular mic right now, so let me just check if I'm good right now. Give me one second. All right, check, check. All right. Yep, sounds like I'm good. All right, check, check. All right. Yep. I think we're good to go. Let me know if uh, if I get any feedback or anything. I'm using my uh, my phone. I'm using my phone and my computer as cameras right now. So sometimes they kind of come together and combine sounds. All right, but overall. I think we're good. Keep this phone right here just to monitor it. All right, give me one sec. All right. Welcome to March, right? January, February just flew by like nothing. We already at it, March. All right. Good morning, everybody. See people coming in. We got a jam-packed show today. All right. This is actually a very fun one that uh, I was having very fun putting it together. All right. Very good learning experience that I went through and I want to share what I've learned. Okay. Uh, I don't know about you, but for our shop, I already know that January, February is going to be our slowest months. Like just the way history has repeated itself every year after every year. All right. And that's fine because September, October, November, December, those are our big go-to seasons. All right. So it, it actually feels all right. It feels pretty good for it to kind of go down a little bit, downshift a bit when it comes to January and February. All right. But what I like to do, this is the time where I like to test stuff out. I like to do uh, some personal self projects. Um, a lot of what ifs, right? What if we do it like this? What if we do it like that? And some stuff that we traditionally do, digitizing and embroidery, that's the time where I like to play that what if game. Well, what if we do it like this? We've been doing it like this the whole time, but what if we try this? Okay, so I think the early months, because the last thing you want to do is test anything on actual game day or real customer type projects, all right? So uh, with this project that I did here, I wanted to challenge myself and digitize the MLB logos, okay? Uh, the reason why I like to do that is not just MLB logos. I just like doing uh, logos in general, all right? As a self, um, uh, personal projects, right? Your own personal project. This is nothing to kind of go out and mass produce or anything. These are all self projects. And the reason why I like to, to do that is because these are what I call uh, known goods. Okay. These logos are called, I, I consider them known goods because really these are logos that have been in existence for a lot of these for over a hundred years. All right. So they've really tested the test of time. All right. They've passed. All right. With flying colors, the test of time. All right. And a lot of times there's logos that are similar. OK. Sometimes you'll have a customer and they'll give you a logo and it'll remind you of a logo that you've seen before. For example, the, the Boston Bee. OK. I know the Boston Bee uh, fire department. That font, that text. OK. Very similar to the Boston Bee. All right. So. A lot of times when you're practicing uh, logos, uh, especially the ones that have tested the test of time or have passed the test of time, okay, it'll remind you of certain stuff. And if you've practiced, if you tested certain logos out, uh, you'll have some lessons learned, all right, which I, I've had some lessons learned here. Uh, these, these that I've done here, I stitched them out 
And for the most part, on the first round, they came out pretty good, but there's always those ones or twos where something doesn't look right, all right? So uh, you go back to the drawing board and you adjust some minor stuff, all right? So that's kind of what I want to talk about today. And just quick, some quick announcements that I got today. Uh, if you are a channel member, all right, these files are available and uh, they're there to, uh, they're available so you could test them, uh, analyze them, measure them, break them up, make them better, okay, because there's always ways to make stuff better, all right. Um, I stitched these out on twill with one piece of cutaway and they all came out, they all came out good, all right, so they're, they're good to go, all right. Um, I do have a slide for today's show, all right. Uh, the way I'm going to break it down today. Okay, I'm going to do a uh, just kind of like a presentation of of what to expect when you're uh, looking at uh, at certain logos. Okay, uh, I like to call certain areas critical points, areas that might give you trouble. All right. So there's there's certain areas for the most part, digitizing should be straightforward. But every now and then you'll get a you'll get a file. And there's one specific area that's giving you a headache. Okay. So those are what I'll call critical points. All right. Um, so that's kind of what I want to highlight today. All right. Critical points, lessons learned. Uh, every time I do a file or every time I do a project, I know there's always a lesson learned from every, pro every project that I get. Even repeat customers, like customers where I'm doing a same logo, but they shift to a different garment, okay? Let's say we're going from a hat to a beanie, okay? There's lessons learned from there. Sometimes a certain logo that that's perfectly fine for a polo shirt, for some reason, is not gonna work on a beanie, all right? So the more rounds, the more repetition that we do, the more lessons learned that we get, okay? And kind of what I wanna highlight today too is if, you're, if your shop also slowed down a bit, um, anytime you have the slow season, everybody has a slow season, all right? So it's just a matter of knowing when is your, when is your slow or your down season. That's the time to test and, and experiment with different uh, type of stitches, different type of logos, and different type of techniques, all right? Uh, so let's say some good mornings real quick, all right? We got a jam-packed house today. Jesse, good morning from Cyclone. West Virginia. Good morning, Barb. Tammy. Tim. Oak Lawn, Illinois. All right, all right. John from Michigan. All right. Nice to have you. Lola, North Carolina. All right, all right. Harley. Good morning, good morning. All right. Damps. Good morning from Florida. All right. I got. I kind of have my screen. Kind of at a distance, so I can barely see it. T-Town in the house. Toledo, Ohio. Maxine from Oregon. All right. Lyrics from Nigeria. All right, right. Flips, 40 cool. Uh, new here, but your videos got me by new and Broomery got it last week. And my stuff looks horrible. Ha <laughs> ha. Saving all my stuff to see my improvement. Oh yeah, you. Uh, if you got a new embroider machine, you always want to save all your new stuff, all your first stuff, because you're you're gonna slowly see how uh, you're gonna you're gonna improve. It's all practice. Nobody ever buys a machine and gets it like 100% from the get go. All right, um, just start with simple basic projects and then work your way up. Infinite Threads from Maryland, Ashley from Georgia. All right. Deborah from Virginia. All right, all right. Good to have everybody here. All right, I'm super excited for this one. All right, so um, first we'll start off with just some some breakdowns that I have. I like what I like to do. I like to go to the mall and just look at garments. All right, so especially I love going to lids. I go to lids and I'm like a kid in a candy store. All right. Nobody knows that that's working right there, but they don't know that I'm just there like, wow, looking at all the stuff, especially when there's new product coming in. All right. But I'm going in there. I'm looking at the size. 
what size of designs are being used, um, what are certain areas, critical areas, like uh, long stitch lengths, okay, uh, sand stitches, just different types of techniques that the pros, right, that the super pros that have been doing it for hundreds of years, all right, because a lot of these logos have been out there for hundreds of years. All right, so I like to see that. Um, so this is kind of how I, how I break it down when I go and I see it, all right? All right. And then let me answer this question. This is a good one. Before we start, I answer this quiz, this first quick one. All right, Ashley, good morning. All right, um, what is the best way to learn digitizing? All right, so to learn digitizing, first, I would say to you have to have run a lot of garments. You have to have seen garments being stitched out and seeing kind of like thinking in terms of a digitizer, how the, how the digitizer um, laid everything out, their sequence, how they put the underlay, why they put the underlay there. Okay, just kind of just see how in general how stitches kind of formulate and then start with the most basic designs you can start with. Um, best way would be to start with text. Learn text. If you learn how text works, you can easily gradually transition to more complicated designs. Um, but it's all practice. It's just practicing uh, every week. Have a, have a personal project that you're working on. And then you'll soon quickly see that all that training it'll pile up on top of each other and you'll just be learning more stuff and more stuff and more stuff. And next thing you know, okay, I would say if you, if you go all out 100%, uh, I would say anywhere from like six months, six months to a year, you'll, you'll understand digitizing. All right. Um, that's just kind of how to learn in a nutshell. All right. And then uh, T-Town. Uh, I've seen this situation happen a lot too, all right? You have a cu cu customers that want that new era hat, all right? But new era, like the, the, the popular ones, they don't sell those blanks, all right? You got to be like a big time uh, licensed vendor on a certain uh, team or project to actually get those, the ones that everybody wants. Uh, they do have blanks. It's, I, I, I forgot which one it is. I bought one one time and I wasn't the, the biggest fan of their blanks, uh, but they do have blanks out there. Okay. But yeah, they don't have the, the main ones. All right. Hey, good morning, Bevy Jean. Nice to have you here. All right. Um, yeah. TMG. Yep. At Samar, they have new era caps. All right. It's just not the main one. It's not like the flat bill. It's like the curved bills that they got. All right. Let me put this full screen right here. All right. So uh, before we start, all right, when I, when I think of digitizing and I think of embroidery, this is what I think of. Okay. I think of construction specifically the foundation of a house okay uh so the first picture all right we have a joint uh butt joint okay so when we think of a butt joint just think of uh the letter t right the letter t is two joints hold on let me go on camera right here so i can kind of show you All right, let me know if I'm back with audio. 
All right, I think I'm good now. All right, sorry about that. I got to keep this screen on. It doesn't like when I remove it. Um, I got to dial in my settings on my uh, switcher. Okay, hold on. All right, you see me right here. All right, so let's talk about um, our joints, okay? That can be the headache in digitizing, all right? When, uh, when we're getting objects crossing each other, okay? We wanna know what's on top of what, all right? So on the left side, so the top left, we have our butt joint, and then the, the top right, okay? Now we have our butt joint, but now they're at an angle, all right? So which we could call miter, miter joint, all right? So when it's angled, they're mitered. But as they become, as they open up and they become a 90, all right? Now we just have an L shape. We can have one object, okay, one object. And you, you, it'll, make, it'll make sense right now when we're looking at these files. Okay, bottom right, bottom right, that picture there, right? That's the foundation of, that's the foundation of the, of the building. Okay, so depending how wide your stitches are, that's how much underlay we know or underlay or foundation. So anytime you hear of underlay, just think of the foundation, the stitches below, that's holding up the stitches above, all right? So the wider, so you could think, just think of a building. The wider your building is, the more underlay you're gonna need, okay? The more foundation you're going to need, all right? So just kind of uh, another way how I think about when I'm thinking of uh, stitches. I like to compare them to construction. All right, now I could remove my, all right. Let me just make sure my audio is here. All right, we're still good here. Yep. All right, real quick. Okay, real quick. I know we talked about this in the last uh, couple weeks and months. All right, these are the steps. Okay, these are the steps that I that I follow, and not in any specific order. All right, but when I'm thinking about digitizing. These are everything that's running through my mind. So that's why I think digitizing can be challenging because a lot of times you're, you're thinking so many settings. There's so many settings we got to think about and it's overwhelming. But if you kind of break them up into pieces, all right, uh, and you take your time, then it starts making a little bit more sense. All right. So the sequence right now when I'm going through these pictures, when I'm looking at these files or if somebody gives me a design, First thing I'm thinking of is sequence. What goes first? Specifically, what's on top of what? What is our primary stitch? Okay, that's what I would call it. The last stitch, the final stitch that goes over everything, I'm gonna call it the primary stitch. And that'll be the last stitch in our sequence. All right, so I'm thinking of our initial stitch. Where am I starting? Where am I moving to next? And where am I ending? All right, tracing is the actual click clicks, right, on your mouse when you're clicking your shape. You're just tracing. That's what it is. All right, if you have good artwork, if somebody sent you correct artwork, then it, tracing should be simple. Okay, and then the density is how, how thick do you want your, your, your stitches to be or how close do you want your stitches to be? All right, and then the length, how, how long are your stitches? All right, and then stitch angles. Uh, really the stitch angles, that's the way the stitches are facing. So we'll see it here. I have some super zoomed in, uh, pictures that we're going to go over. And then the underlay, that's the foundation. How much foundation do you want under your stitches? And usually the longer your length, the longer your, your sand stitches are, the more underlay you want. Okay. So just think of a building, the bigger the building the more foundation you want. So the bigger the length, the more underlay you want too, okay? Pull compensation. Anytime you have stitches, 
uh, overlapping each other. Now we have to start thinking about pool compensation. Start stops. Where do you want to start? Where do you want to end? Every object has a start and every object has an end. Tie-ins, tie-outs. Usually we save those for last. Uh, where do you want to tie in? Sometimes that could be a problem uh, if, if there's uh, specific details and areas that you want. Uh, you don't want to tie in or tie out in little areas where you have uh, small, small, tiny details. And then trims and jumps. Trims, you want to avoid trims uh, as much as possible. Okay, because trims stops the machine, uh, the possibility of getting a thread break or something happening to your machine increases every time you trim uh, your machine. Not saying that it's always gonna, it's, that's always gonna happen, but the possibility, the possibility is there, all right? Even if it's at a 1% possibility, the possibility is there, all right? And it just slows down the machine and it just includes tie-ins, tie-outs. Okay, so the, the least trims, the better. All right. Um, all right, so just kind of like as a quick, uh, in a nutshell, these are like the, the, the settings that I'm thinking about in my head. Okay, and they're not, they don't have to specifically be in a specific order. But we do want to make sure we don't forget about any of these when we finally save and we go and we go to digitize it or we go and stitch it out. All right. All right. So as my first sample here, OK, I have my logo. So usually the customer. They give you the logo. And they tell you, hey, can you stitch out this logo? All right. They don't really know that there's specific steps, right? They just think uh, we put the JPEG into the machine and the machine's gonna embroider stitches, right? They already they just automatically happen, all right? Of course, we have to send it to a digitizer or we digitize it, but we have to know where do we start, where do we end? So here you can locate, so if you're looking at the right-hand side, Look for the areas where we have the butt joints. All right. So you can see, uh, well, first of all, kind of count how many objects do we have. Okay. So if you break this, if you break up the A, how many shapes do we have in this area? Okay. So I could, so I see one, two, three, four, five, six. I'm counting six objects here. All right. Two on the bottom. We got the, the, the middle, the bridge, right? So one, two, three, and then the two pieces coming out of the A, and then that triangle on the very top, which is our cap of the A. So one, two, three, four, five, six. All right, six. Um, here, I'm, I'm showing a hat, hat as an example, just so our picture could kind of stand out a bit so we could see it a little bit better. All right, uh, usually if, if I'm, if I need to have ideas of how to digitize a certain uh, design, okay, I like to go to these already tested out designs. All right, because sometimes when you're look, so if we're looking at the left hand side, the left A, just by looking at the picture by itself, we can't tell what's on top of what, what's going first. All right. So with practice, we'll know we'll know what's budding into what. What is the primary stitch? What is the what is the initial stitch? All right, all right. Um, let's see this one here. Uh, some of the lessons learned, and I'll and I'll we'll talk about it when I pull up the file. But one of the lessons learned is just getting this cap nice and clean. All right, where where it looks where we get a good blend on this cap, the top part of the A. All right, but for the most part, very straightforward logo. All right, one of the easier logos in uh, out of these 30 logos of the MLB, one of the easier ones, all right? One of the straightforward ones. All right, let's go to the next one. All right, so we got the Washington. 
All right, so look for the areas where our files are or our stitches are coming together. So the left part of the W, if you can locate that miter, all right, which is kind of like the V, the V area of the W. All right, so you see that miter. All right, hold on, let me pull myself a little. So miter is like that triangle area, right? So on the left side of the W, all right? So you can kind of see how they blend those two objects coming together, all right? So you want to have a nice, clean blend. So you want the angles, all right, to kind of easily come together when you're digitizing. And then around the loop, when you see the loop, you see those butt joints. And then you have your primary stitch going over that joint right there. Okay, so anytime we have joints coming together, those are areas of uh, concern. Not too much concern here, but um, not like 911 concern, but concern where, hey, you got to keep an eye on these areas. Because what you don't want to happen is any gapping to occur right here. So here, for the most part, uh, there's no gapping on this design. Okay, So we can talk about uh, ways to minimize uh, gapping from occurring. All right, But for the most part, same thing here. All right, Everything should be done in one shot. There shouldn't be any cuts here. Everything is running together smoothly. And for the most part, all right, we're looking for uh, zero trims in between stitches. And then we have our red outline. So on the right-hand side, we have our red outline. And what you want to look for and, and, and really pay attention to is just making sure our sand stitches are running consistent. All right. For the most part here in this design, it is running consistent. Um, but there may be times where a piece of uh, something might be sticking out a sand stitch down below might be sticking out or might be coming in too, too close inside where it kind of gets lost. All right, so we're, we're looking out for that. All right, for the most part, this W, straightforward. All right, I really didn't have any uh, concern digitizing this one. All right, let's go to the next one. All right, Detroit. And when I save these pictures, I like, or when I'm analyzing pictures, I like to um, look at the colored thread because you can see here, you can see the details when we're talking about color thread. So sometimes if you're analyzing the white thread, it's kind of hard to see details. But here, since everything is dark and when the light comes in, we kind of see, um, we can kind of see little areas, critical areas or areas of concern. All right. Let me see. Uh, all right, very straightforward. Bam, bam, here. All right. Oh, one cut or zero cuts in between. All right, so all this should be done in one shot, which are my favorite type of files. All right, very straightforward. Uh, all right, now we're getting to some uh, different ones here. Uh, we have the Texas. Uh, and then if you've seen that video that I made, uh, I did I did talk about some of the critical areas, which is the corner of the T. All right. At a specific height, our thread starts getting real long. All right. So we're looking at it can get up to uh, 11 plus millimeters. All right. Um, so here, look at the butt joints. All right. Sometimes you got to add more thread and you or you have to you have to make sure that it passes through into uh, the object that it's going into. All right. Which I'll show you in a bit. All right. Now. Now we're getting to some where it's getting a little bit more uh, complicated. Because if you're just looking at the logo at the left, for if we're just focused on the left side, you can't really know, you can't really tell just by the flat picture what goes on top of what. 
All right. If you were to see this file for the very first time, you got to make a decision and see, well, what's overlapping what? Okay. That's why some of these uh, files, they're good. Our known goods, files that have already been done, kind of gives us an idea of what should be on top of what. All right. Because if you're trying to guess this, you might guess wrong and you might put the wrong, uh, the wrong object overlapping the object that's not supposed to be overlapped. Okay. So here on the right-hand side, you can see that the F, the top of the F overlaps the S, but the bottom, the S overlaps the F there. All right. So very important. And it changes the sequence. All right. Just by saying that. So uh, when I digitize this, uh, also one shot. So I'm always, I'm always focused on uh, digitizing it with zero cuts in between. And it's just a matter of planning it out. What goes first? What should digitize first? And we always want to, you always want to start from the bottom and work your way up. Same thing with the center and work your way out. Okay. So usually you want to start with the bottom in mind and then thinking, what am I going to digitize next? So I'll play that one in a bit. I'll play it and show how I digitized it. Uh, for the most part, we only have one area, the bottom, the bottom of the F. We have a, a long thread right there. If you can see it, it's kind of long there. Kind of see it right there. All right. But for the most part, very straightforward, um, especially when we're talking about flat design. Okay. Now, if we're talking about puff, now we have a lot of capping. Okay. We have a lot of details we got to think about. All right. A little bit more complicated if we're talking about 3D puff, but for the most part, flat, flat embroidery, very straightforward. Okay. And then we got the STL. Okay. And here, same thing with the, same thing with the San Fran logo. If you were just to see the, the left side, you can't really tell what's on top of what. Right. Somebody were to give you just the left side, uh, just the, the the JPEG file. You would either have to make a uh, decision and figure out what's on top, what's on the bottom. All right. So some things that we're looking at here is our butt joints, our our miter joints. What's going first? What's going to go last? All right. So you can see here. Uh, the T is all the way on top, okay? So at least we know that, the, the T, the S and L, they're kind of interconnected together, all right? So that kind of plays a role on where to start, where to end, all right? And then we have our bottom sand stitches, the white area. And as we're looking at it, we have good, uh, everything is consistent. All right, everything is consistent. And then, uh, no, the that's a good question, TMG. Are the right photos you stitched out? No, I didn't. I didn't stitch these out. These are the ones from. These are the actual the known goods from MLB, uh, the MLB website. Okay. Uh, and these are the straight view. All right. So right now I'm just showing the known goods and comparing the, the JPEGs with, with an actual stitch out. And if I were not to, if I wouldn't have a reference, if I would just um, digitize this without a reference, it'd be hard to see what's on top of what. So I'm using this as a reference to show me what's going to go on top, what's going to go on bottom. How, how, much, how much of a sand stitch do I need below? Um, because if you look at the logo, it looks like the sand stitch is more wider than the actual uh, stitch out that they did. All right. And one thing that I want to highlight, too, is that everything is adjustable. OK, so if if this white, if you're seeing your white thread, the, the right hand side picture. If you're seeing your right hand, your uh, if you're seeing your white thread. Being small like this, but you. 
you want it you want it to show out a little bit more that's all adjustable okay it should be all adjustable all right so we'll talk about how we can adjust these uh the Y portion or the sand stitches to be a little bit more visible. All right. And then here, same thing. So if you break it down, how many shapes do you see here? If you were to break down these TC into shapes, how many? So with the letter T, I see three shapes. All right. So we have our top bar. We have our middle. And then that bottom, since it's being cut up with the C, that's a separate object, all right? So when they're getting cut up like that, you got to see how they're they're being broken up. And then the letter C, we have two, two objects, all right? So if you've got to think about what do you want to do first? Do you want to do the letter C first or do you want to do the letter T, all right? So that's the main thing. That's the main thing with digitizing is where do you want to start? Where do you want to end? And, and usually there's no right or wrong answer. There's probably the more popular answer. Okay. But I don't think there's ever a right or wrong answer. Uh, sometimes different garments require different techniques. Right. Uh, and then here. Okay. I would say out of all the, out of all the, the lettered fonts from the MLB, okay? Um, this one might be one of the more challenging ones because we got to see where do we start, where do we end? So the, the X is the topmost part. So that's the main thing to know because without knowing, without having a reference, if we were just to use the left-hand side, without having a reference, it'd be hard. It'd be kind of difficult to know where to start, where to end. All right, so here, the X, the S is on the bottom, O, X on top, all right? So you kind of want to work your way um, around like that, okay? Even though the X is on the bottom, this might be a situation where we might have to stitch the bottom out last, okay? All right, and then I this is probably like the easiest one out of all the logos, all the MLB logos. Okay, this might be the more uh, the more basic because you have literally once the red is just a full sand stitch, right? And then the outside is just another sand stitch right below it. Okay, I think the challenging part here is just making sure your bottom sand stitch is consistent. Because you'll see there are some files where uh, certain, certain areas, it might get lost. Or a push-pull might pull it up too much. And then you lose the consistency. All right. Also here, you can notice where uh, the center seam, you have like that little hiccup in the center seam. And that usually happens when you have a uh, sand stitch running perfectly like 90 degrees with that seam. You, you can get a gap like in that area, all right? So usually if you're running files with, with super detailed in the where the seam is running, okay, you might have little hiccups in that situation right there, all right? Uh, no big deal right here, all right? This is like super zoomed in. You probably won't even tell if you were to take three steps back, all right? And then... This one here, so same thing, right? We gotta we gotta decide where do we want to start, where do we want to end, and now here we have those uh, decorative portion on the ends. Same thing here. Where where do you want your dominant or your your primary object to be at? Okay, so you can see where the outside. Um, if you're looking at the at the curves. It's the outside portion of the N that really stands out right there, all right? So same thing here. The N is standing behind the Y, all right? If we're just to look at the left-hand side, you can't really tell. So we're using a reference, a known good as a reference. All right? So these are all files that I got uh, from the MLB logo, from the MLB website. Uh, 
I like to study logos and just see um, what, how, how do they, how do they go about digitizing certain files? Okay, and I'm telling you, these, especially these MLB ones, they've been here for hundreds of years, or uh, at least a hundred plus years. Some of them. Okay, so it's past the it's, it's past the test of time. All right, so sometimes you'll find logos that you have or that a customer gives you that'll remind you of certain logos. All right, so you can always go back and be well. Let me see how they did it, just to kind of get a a, a visual of something similar that you've seen. All right, and then. Also, when I'm when I'm analyzing logos, like I said before, I like to see different colors because you could kind of see details with certain colors of thread on pictures. All right. Sometimes white, when you're looking at white thread, it's kind of hard to see. Uh, it's kind of hard to see the details of it. So this one pink, you kind of see it. So here you could see the angles. All right. The, mo the, the biggest thing that I take away from this picture here is looking at the angles, just making sure, uh, running, seeing at what angles these stitches are coming. Because if you look at the top of the Y, okay, you have the top of the Y, those sand stitches, they're kind of tapering inside, okay? So if we didn't have this as a reference, I might have made long stitches on the top of the Y, but you could see how they taper in. All right, and then the end, they have the long, there's no tapering on the end, on the end, the ends of the N, the letter N. They're all long stitches. All right, so using that as a reference. And then right here, this KC, what I learned from this KC, if you look at the, at the serifs or the N tips of the K and the C, it really doesn't match the, the actual picture, right? They're a little tapered. They don't have much of the design. And that's kind of, I would say that's more because of the, the 3D puff. They don't want to put a big cap in that area right there. All right, so sometimes you'll see where certain logos, they get adjusted and they get altered a tad bit so it can, so it can make sense for embroidery. All right, so there's going to be times where you're going to have to tell or you're going to have to alter a certain logo so it could fit embroidery, all right? And then we have the reds right here, all right? Very straightforward. So it looks like the Chicago Bears logo right here, very similar. All right, uh, the only thing here, very straightforward. Uh, you could see the, the tapering at the end of the C's. So it's kind of pinching in. And then the only thing that I would say here is just to be mindful for long threads on the left side of the C. You have the long, that long pointy portion. All right. And then here you could see, I mean, it's very straightforward. There's some logos that are very straightforward. The white, the white portion all right you got your sand stitch right below so this one here should only be two stitches then the boston b the only thing that i see here uh is figuring out what's on top of what all right so the left hand side that left bar of the b that's our primary that's the primary stitch okay so you can kind of see how that is all one piece just all coming from top to bottom all right, uh, outside sand stitches, very consistent, All right? That's what we're looking for is consistency on the bottom white. All right, and then we got the Diamondbacks. All right, uh, this reference here, I like it because it lets you know what, what is sand stitches and what are fill stitches. All right, so it wouldn't make sense to make the red portion um sand stitches because it's too long the threads all right but then the black we can make it sand stitches all right and then you can see the details the ends 
All right, without, without this reference, it'd be hard to tell whether the yellow part is on the top or is it on the bottom. So by using this uh, reference, the way I see it, I see the yellow portion as the bottom, the bottom of the, of the stitches. And then we have the red or the cardinal red, or I don't know the exact color of this, all right? But the red is right on top of the yellow. And then the black or the, no, yeah. The yellow is on top of the red. And then the black is on top of the yellow, okay? So just as a reference there. All right. And right now, what I'm I'm just going over the actual like this is uh I'm just going over how the the stitches uh, the reference a known good so a known good would be something that's already been stitched out that's it that's uh, uh the actual stitch out so these are from the MLB website okay these are 3D puff and I'm using 3D puff to kind of so it could highlight and we can see actual stitches. All right, so the stitches don't get lost in the mix. All right, Tampa Bay here. Um, really, what we're looking at here, so same thing. Very straightforward. We have uh, the T, so we have similarity similarities on the T. This is a very simple T because we're not going too wide on the T. All right, B, straightforward. All right, so these are actually very straightforward here. LA, yep, straightforward. So let me kind of move to the more... Uh, this one here, all right? So we have the Colorado Rockies, and you can see here where we have, uh, it's like a bevel on the C and the R, all right? Now we're kind of getting into ones where we have to start thinking of our moves, all right? So you can see, um, if we're looking at the R, I'm looking at these gray, the gray area that has the purple on top of it. I see it as, these sand stitches they're broken up they're broken into two pieces all right which i'm going to show you once i pull up the files all right but it doesn't look like we have a regular r and then a um a bar on top of it a purple bar on top of it i see it like it's broken into pieces right depending how you see this picture as the reference all right all right so those were our samples of our known goods. Now let's go ahead, let's go over some of these files that I digitized. Oh, all right, cool, cool. All right, so it's, it's just like a practice that I like to do is to look at files that have been tested and pretty much that are good to go. So known goods, going to the mall, seeing actually seeing out stitch outs and seeing how the pros do it uh what is the standard of stitches right especially you go to lids that's probably like the gold standard of embroidery okay you'll see the best of the best right there but sometimes you don't have to go there you could just go to a website and i like to see hats because the 3d foam kind of makes the stitches stand out uh it's kind of hard to uh use as reference like polo shirts and um yeah, just like polo shirts, because a lot of times websites, they don't actually stitch them out for polo shirts. All right. For some reasons, uh, they just they 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 just put like uh, the JPEG picture over the logo. So it's not it's not very good to use as a resource. But hats, you could actually zoom in and, and check out the stitches by checking out hats. All right. Uh, let's go with. All right, let's talk about, so these are the files here. All right, I did pull up some of the ones that we just talked about. All right, so let's talk about this one here, very straightforward, right? Um, it's as basic as you can get, okay? Uh, for these examples, uh, I'm using just flat, flat stitches okay so nothing too complicated just to keep it very basic let me just pull up these 
All right, so. All right, what we're looking at here. Uh, when we're looking at our settings, okay, when we're looking at our settings, we want to know what goes what goes first. What are we going to stitch out first? All right, so of course we're going to put this red part first, because and then the blue is going to go on top of the red. All right. Um, underlay wise, these are all these are what what is always adjustable. Okay, our settings should always be adjustable if you have if you have the actual uh, software files. So that's why it's good practice if you if you have a digitizer to have a program similar or the same program as your digitizer. All right, that way, if there's something that you gotta fix or adjust, you could just uh, adjust the, uh, the settings. For example, this red, let's say I wanna make it a little thinner, okay? Let's say I'm getting too much, and like how I said earlier, everything is adjustable. All right, um, you, it's a column C stitch, meaning we can control the width of our uh, of our sand stitch. So let's say we want to make it a little thinner. Instead of making it a three, you can make it a two. All right, and then it gets a little thinner. All right, or let's say we have gapping, like for some reason there's gaps coming out. Okay, let's say we offset it at one hundred which would be bad day, all right, right here, okay? And you're like, hey, why am I getting gaps, right? If you if you have the ability and you have the actual uh, software file, all right, you could offset it or make it, or maybe go down to a 60, all right? So we can adjust it in that, in those situations, all right? But if, if, if your digitizer, right? If your digit, if you don't have the same software as your digitizer, then you got to go back to your digitizer and tell them that. Because if you just have the DST, you really don't have control, too much control of your files. All right. And if, let's say, your digitizer has a uh, Wilcom, okay, you don't have to go out and get Wilcom. You could actually get like Hatch or something that's in that same uh, umbrella of that software. All right, just as an FYI. All right, because sometimes you gotta you gotta shift from like a shirt to a beanie to a hat, and sometimes, um, especially a, a design like this, is just a matter of settings. All right, underlay. All right, underlay, uh, zigzag, edge run. I like to do edge run when I'm when I'm working with um, files that are a little uh, a little long. So let's say. Um, this, the red of the C, all right? We're looking at a 7.18, so it's almost eight millimeters, okay? Pretty long, pretty long right there, all right? So these are pretty long stitches. You might wanna add a edge run here, all right? That's just foundation, adding foundation to our to our stitches. And then these, if, if it's a three millimeter, the red one, all right, it probably just needs a, uh, uh, a center run and a zigzag. All right, so this one here, very straightforward. Okay, uh, nothing too complicated in that one. All right, uh, let's go with this one, All right? This is one where it might take you a round or two to get it right, okay? Um, let me play this one. Let's play this. Oh, let's slow it down a bit. All right. So right now we're gonna do the main fill stitch, the tatami stitch. All right. So right now, this here. Let me hide this. Oops. Let me hide the picture. So right here is you can see it's the underlay, right? It's the bottom. Right, so we we're we're looking at them like joist, right? We have the we have our tatami, our fill underlay, and then our edge run. You can see how on the edges I have these stitches, and I like to use the this edge run, especially with big fills like this. 
so we don't get any shifting we don't lose registration so it locks it helps lock in our our design right here and then it starts doing the actual fill okay so you want to add you want to add underlay to control to have a a strong base if we were just to go straight to that fill you can start getting like uh wobbly designs like our design starts shifting and looking a little wobbly but we already put down this foundation so it should hold on pretty strong all right i'm doing it at a zero degrees which worked out good i like working at zero degrees there might be some designs that we're gonna have to shift it to like a 15 degree, right? And a zero degree just means that it's going from left to right. How the stitches are just moving from left to right. All right, and then the next question is, what's the next color? All right, so let me see. All right, and we're going with the yellow. So we're knock out this piece right here. And then do this outside part. So we could put this part of the detail in, then do the outside. So since we're following the same color, we could all do this in one shot. And same thing here, we can control how thick we want the sand stitches to be. Like if we see that it's not enough or it's too big, we can control it the same way we control the C. And then we're going to stop here. And now it's ready to do the black portion, all right, the black portion of the design. And then we can do this part first. Same thing. We just want to make sure that we have um, enough coverage with the gold and the bottom, the red, the red portion. All right. And then cut there, jump over here. And then right here, we can do a sand stitch right here. Just run it out clean. All right, and then we can do that little detail right there, that star right there, all right? So for the most part, uh, straightforward. The only thing, the lesson learned that I would have here is uh, being able to control your sand stitches. If it's too little, control it. If it's too much, all right? So for example, here, our yellow. Let's say we, we, we want to control our yellow. If we had issues with these, all right, we come to our column here it's at a two millimeters all right pretty 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 thin file so we got to make it it has to come out nearly perfect all right because if not uh, you may get gapping usually with two millimeters uh, you might be getting gapping all right but if that was the case you could either make it thicker two point well let's do something big so we could see the actual difference we could do a four millimeter all right if you really want it to stand out Okay, well, that one fit it good there, okay? And the way I know how much, how thick I'm using it, okay, either following the actual design, right? But you can see here, I'm kind of I'm kind of passing this design. If I were to try to digitize it according to the picture, I might be too small. I might need to go down to a, a 1.5 or a 1, which I might be too small by, by the time I get to that point right there. All right. Um, and then I'll see if I uh, I have the pictures of the stitch outs, but I, I don't have them on the on this file on this computer right here. I gotta put them down for my phone. All right. Um, but one thing that I want to highlight is making sure you know that everything is adjustable. All right. So let's say in this black area here, if we were to have gapping. Okay. And the reason why everything is adjustable, because we could compensate for any issues that we're having. Let's say we're having a gap and you and you just want to add a hair of thickness. All right. So we go. Um, just, oh, all right. Actually, this one is not, this one was done actually by um, the column A stitch, all right? So we can't just change the thickness with one click of a button. We actually got to come here, right? So we collect, we select our nodes 
and you actually got to adjust them here. All right. So this one here, probably going to take a little bit more steps. But these, this one here is good because it doesn't change everything in one shot, right? If you just need to change one little specific area, it'll just change one specific area, all right? So every, every, every uh, tool of digitizing has its pros, its cons, all right? So that was using the letter A. You would just do it individually if you need it to be wider or smaller. All right. Mm. All right, let's talk about this one here. All right, this one here. Uh, bam, bam. All right, good morning, everybody. Bam, bam, bam. All right, got the New York. All right, here, what I was trying to show is um, sometimes even little small details that nobody would ever think about, right? Customers won't even think about. But sometimes we got to see... Uh, What's on top? Is it this side, the left side, or is it the right side? Who's on top, right? So that's why I use that reference, the main picture, to see what did what did they do as a main, which it really doesn't really matter, right? Nobody's really going to notice. But those are little small attention to detail stuff that, that in certain designs can play a role, all right? There's some designs where uh, the customer might think like, hey, this little piece of detail has to be there all right but for the most part i put this part as the outer this part as the bottom part all right and let's play this one this one you can see here on the trims only one trim all right so zero trims in between and let's see the all right hold on so it's all about where are we going to start, where are we going to end, and where are we going to move. So anytime you see these uh, these walking stitches, that just means I'm going from one place to another just to avoid cuts. All right. This one here, I just walked over here just so I could, uh, just so I don't have to start from the bottom. I at least make some uh, connect to the, to the underlay or to the stabilizer, I mean, by walking down. All right. And so do that part first. Walk. Okay. Walk. And now I'm doing this part of the Y. And I'll tell you why I do this that part first. And that's because it's gonna get it's going to be on the bottom part of this next portion. All right. Okay, since this part is the, the primary portion the top side that's why i have these running down below all right uh edge run with a zigzag just to kind of I, I like to do that when i have uh curves also i like to put uh, edge runs all right now i'm walking now i'm going to do uh this part of the end since i already did this side of the end i'm doing the other side of the end I'm going to walk all the way down. I'll do this part. Covers that part of the end. I'm going to walk and do this portion. Okay. And then finish the end part here. Now do that. Uh, the Y, top of the Y. And I'm kind of closing myself in. And this part, this bar of the Y is the primary, is the primary stitch that's going to be on top of everything. That's why I saved this one for last. All right, and then it ends right there. Bam. All right. So by using uh, walking stitches and planning it out and seeing what's on top of what is how I uh, plan my route. All right. Um, then this one here. All right, we have the Colorado Rockies. All right, this is one where I had I had to make the decision. All right, let me hide this part. Okay, so I broke these pieces into two sand stitches instead of making one long one, because that would have been a long, super long stitch right here. All right, it would have been 
about 9.5 millimeters, right? But just so it could kind of be a little bit more uh, firm and stronger, make it a little shorter. Okay. And then put that sand stitch right on top of that. So let me show that here, unhide. And let's push play. And then real quick, this one requires a little bit more trims, all right? Uh, there's always there's always ways to make it better. You probably could cut it down to like four trims, um, all right? But for the most part, this is the route that I did it in. So I'm doing these. And then I have a, I'm capping this area right here. So this area, I'm gonna, I'm gonna close it up. I'm gonna close these two stitches by putting a cap here. All right, so that's what I mean when I'm doing a cap. All right, so I have a cut there. Move on to the next one, cap it here. Now I start the R, same thing, I'm doing it with two, two cons, knock that part out, walking. All right, so I left that bottom part of the R. I have to go back and do that one, right? That's why. Close this cap. So, it, so I kind of, I kind of left these open here, which I got to go back. That's why I add these eight trims. All right. Do one trim there, trim there. All right. Uh, there could be a way to do all this with one stitch. All right. It would just require more planning. All right, but I'm good with this. All right, uh, that was what like four cuts, which is a, which is fine. And now here, since they're separated, uh, we're gonna have cuts in between. So knock this one out first. Put a sand stitch here. Sand stitch in between here. Same thing here. Then bam. All right. So uh, what I'm looking out for right here is making sure these sand stitches cover they, they get covered right here so we don't have any gapping in between all right usually you can measure these all right we're at about one millimeter which is pretty good okay which is usually standard for uh overlaps is one millimeter okay but if you if you do get any gapping right in certain areas you could always adjust this is like over exaggerating just to highlight it. All right. But everything is adjustable. All right. Uh, if something is gapping, uh, usually you always want to, you always want to start with the machine, making sure your machine's good, making sure your hooping's good, and then go to the digitizing. All right. Uh, before trying to fix something, if something's not coming out right, losing registration, just make sure that your um, your hooping is done correctly. All right, um, then this one was fun. This one here, this one's a challenge because you wanna, I'm trying to do all this, I'm doing, I'm trying to do the red part all with one, with zero cuts in between, all right? So this is one where you have to look at it and it's like a puzzle. It's like, where do we start? Where do we end? Okay, where do I start? Where do we end? So let me push play and let me see how I went about it. All right, so first it's gonna do the, the bottom sand stitch, which that one is straightforward. That one's gonna do it with no problem. All right. And then I'll show you how I go about doing these, this outline part right here. All right. Uh, real quick, if we got to adjust this, okay, um, hide, where's my hide? Okay, if we have to adjust this, all right, these are situations, it's at a 2.5 millimeters, all right, uh, if we need to go a little bigger, all right, which we don't have to in this situation, but if we have to, right, which is overkill right here, or if we want to go smaller, okay. Uh, that's the benefit of the of the column C stitch. Okay, if you want to go smaller. Okay, on the sample that we had, the, the one that we viewed of the known good, it was very small, right? Very subtle. So if you don't want something that's very big, 
and just make it smaller there. All right. Let me put it back to normal. All right, let's play this part. Um, oh, hide. Let me hide this part. Oh, no, let me show it. It's better. All right, let's push play. Let's go straight to the red part. All right, now let's slow this down. All right, this is the challenging part is where do you go? Uh, where do you start? Where do you go next? So I'm going to start on the bottom of the L and then I'm going to go, I want to say to the T. So let's see. Let's see if, I'm, if I remember correctly. All right. So I'm knocking out these pieces. I'm knocking out the first piece. I'm knocking out the pieces that are going to be uh, below our stitches, our primary stitches. All right. So now I knock that piece out. Now I'm going to do this part of the T. All right, and then I'm gonna do this part. So that means every piece that comes together has to butt inside. Okay, we're gonna have butt joints at this one. Okay, so bam, right there. So here, you can see how I did this little butt joint right here, pushing in a tad bit so I don't have any gapping. All right, you just, it's, usually it just requires a little push inside just to get it so it could look good. If you're having gapping, you could push that area in there. All right, and then it's gonna go around and here. Notice, since I'm gonna have a butt joint here, I pushed inside. I'm working my way inside to have that overlap. Okay, so you can see how it's gonna overlap. You don't wanna, you don't wanna do it too perfect where you're gonna have a gap in between right there. Okay, so. Play that. It's going to do this part. All right. So we're doing a clean overlap. So you can see how much overlap we have right here. More than enough overlap. That's just to prevent uh, any gapping, pulling of the threads. Okay. So it's going to finish this portion. It's going to move over to the next. All right. It's going to do this top part. Knock this out. And then... All right, it's going to do this side. Same thing here. Since we're going to have a bunt joint here, right, we're going to have to push in a bit. So I'll show you one. All right, we have a little, a little overlap here. Okay. Coming in. Now it's going to do the final one. So this piece, this is the final piece. All right, we got everything here. It's going to do the final piece of the puzzle. All right, then, all right, pushed in a bit so we don't get no gapping. And then, bam, go over. Then it's gonna close in right here with a little push. You see that? Little push over, all right. Uh, one of the lessons learned that I've seen uh, working with these type of files and uh, seeing other people's files is if you're getting gapping, just kind of focus on the overlaps. If there's overlaps happening, usually that's when you get uh, gapping. Okay. You always want to start with your stabilizer, making sure your your garment stabilized. Because if you don't if you don't put the proper stabilizer, uh, you might get uh, registration problems, and it's going to give you gapping no matter what you do to the file. So. You don't want to fix the file. If the file is perfectly fine, but your hooping is incorrect, you might be fixing something that has nothing to do with the problem. So you always want to start with the stabilizer and then and then fix your uh, fix your file. All right. And then um, we got a good question here. T-Town, would it be easy to convert to Puff? Okay. Uh, so with Puff, two things that we gotta we gotta do to adjust this one here, right? Any, any location that we have an open area, such as this one here. So let me hide this black. All right, so very good question. Let's put my needles. All right, all these white dots, these are where my needle hits. All right, so these are all where needle hits. You can see this 
big open spot where there's no needles hitting. Okay. Let me adjust my density. So two things we got to do. Well, three. Remove underlay. Adjust density to 0.18. All right, so now we close them up a bit. But you see all this area here where there's no needle penetrations? So we have to have we have to add a, a capping here, okay? Just do a quick one, all right? This is what a capping is. Of course, we'll move on earlier. All right, and then just adjust it a tad bit. Not making the perfect one, but just as an example here. H, pop this out a bit. All right, so everywhere we have these open areas, we would have to add a capping. And this one here, I would say this one here is a more challenging one. And I'll tell you why it's a challenging one. So everywhere everywhere you got that open space. All right, put cappings, and then you put them down below. All right, try that again. Oops. Put these down below. All right, so all these open spaces, they would need its capping there. Uh, what would make this kind of complicated, or not complicated, but time consuming, you have to do that on every side. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So you have nine cappings that you would have to add, right? It's just an extra uh, bit of time. All right, and then you would have to, we would have to rearrange our uh, sequence a tad bit, not too much, just because we removed all the underlay, just to make sure everything fit. But those would be the three steps that we would do. So change the density to a tighter density, 0.18, add the capping, and then check your, um, check your sequence. All right, fix your sequence. All right, good question right there. All right, let me see. Um, and then this one here, okay, let's play this one. This one, I did it with two two cuts. Okay, this one could be done with one. I just added that first one because on the left side, you see that uh, this one here? I, I made this one by itself, all right? But we could have done it together. Oh, let's see. So let's push play. So knock this one out first. Okay, I could have connected it with the O and kept it going. All right, but all right. So it's all about where are we starting? Okay, where are we starting? Where are we ending? We know S is on the bottom, then goes O, then goes X. All right. So those are our uh, our criteria that we have to follow. Okay. So here. Okay. Let me just show you one thing here. I kind of push this one here, H. You see how it sticks out a tad bit? That's just to get that uh, that rounded look on our S, and so we don't get any any gaps in between. Mainly for gaps, so we don't get that gap here. All right, so it kind of gradually comes in. All right, let me play that again. All right, and then it goes here. So there's no more cuts after this. All right, uh, goes around, does the S, then it's gonna walk. It's, it's gonna look for what's the bottom part, what's, what's getting overlapped is what I'm focusing right here. Okay, so since the O is gonna overlap, I do the, that part of the S. And then let me rewind this path just a tad bit. Oh, we can push play right here. Oops, rewind a bit. All right. This one here, if you see this little corner, we got this little piece of detail. Okay, this little sharp part of the detail. All right, that's why I broke up the O into pieces, just to get that little bit of detail in there. 
right? It stops right there. Now it's going to go, right? So it, it extends a tad bit, right? So these one, two, three stitches that show up here, it, it, it doesn't seem like much, but it, it kind of highlights the details of the, of the O. All right, we got the overlap right there, enough overlap. Same thing here. It's going to stretch that out a bit. Now we move on to the X. All right, the X straightforward. So we already have our uh, our overlap here, and then it'll finish over here. So this is a situation where where we started from the top and we kind of worked our way down to the bottom. All right. Uh, if we were to do this with a uh, 3D puff. We're looking at capping this area here, and then no capping here. Everything just closing on itself. Um, yeah, there, there. Here, these X's would need capping. Okay, so if you ever see like an actual White Sox hat, this is where you'll see uh, you'll see a lot of movement here. Like here, you got to get it correctly, all right? Because we're get we're we're moving to a small area. But you can see just in this little small area, we're getting uh, four caps. One, two, three, four small little caps. Here we don't need caps because it's going to close on it, on it, on itself here. So let's say this part here, it has, D, dot, it has needles here. So cuts, anytime you see needle penetration, just think of cuts. It has its cuts right here. So that's why we don't need needle um, capping in between overlaps, all right? Just on the ends. All right, good question right there. All right, let me see. Um, and then we'll, f we'll I'll finish with this one, all right? I mean, we could go, there's a lot of lessons learned with a lot of these files, but for the most part, let me just kind of bring this up a bit, all right? Just like a point that I want to talk about here. All right. Um, hold on, we have a question right here. If we digitize designs for 3D, is it okay to run the, all right. I don't know if there's a part two to this question or the second part. All right, bam, bam. Mm. What I want to say here is I think the best logos are the very simple, right? Very simple, not too complicated, not too much heavy on the details, okay? Uh, like if you go to lids, you'll see that all, especially the front side, maybe on the sides, right? They do all that crazy stuff because it's flat. But once you talk about um, just emblems, okay? I like to focus just on simple, making everything simple as can be because it stands out a little bit better. Uh, and especially when you're working with certain stitch lengths, so I would say anywhere from like three, six to eight millimeters, those are when logos really stand out, okay? Um, so here, this one, I would say is probably the easiest or one of the easiest ones to do. Okay, uh, this is all in one object. Okay, I think this is one of the very few logos where everything is done on one object. All right, um, the only thing that I see here, you can see this, right? This means we have long stitches. All right, that means outlines. Anytime you see this, right? We have an auto split, so I have it at nine millimeters. Usually it's at set at seven. That's like standard, all right? But you'll see how they all get split here. Uh, if you have a file that's very long, you don't want to do this long stitch, you could probably even do 11, right? Removes them. It'll leave, and it, it, it'll adjust any stitches that are longer than 11 millimeters. All right, because now we're getting too long. All right, just kind of just to kind of protect 
protect the design a bit. All right, but anytime you see auto split, sometimes you'll see people just fully take off auto split. And if you have something like this, let's measure this. We're looking at about, we're, we're, we're above 12. So a lot of machines, a lot of machines, they're not going to accept of lengths greater than 12 millimeters, all right? It might just do a, a auto a auto split right here, all right? So if you kind of want to avoid that, you could just select this and on your auto split, control your auto split to maybe 11, okay? So either in this situation, you would either make your design a tad bit smaller or add an auto split. Okay, depending on what you want to do, All right? Usually for flat, uh, not a big problem to do an auto split, okay? Here I'm doing an auto split at nine millimeters, okay? But for 3D puff, you want to remove that, uh, or you could test it out, see how it looks, all right? Um, the way I did this, let me just show you how I did this. All right, just real quick. All right, let's do a quick one right here. Uh, column B is my favorite one, one that I've been using. Uh, I know column A is the more popular one. All right, but with the column B, you do one side, column A first or side A first, right? So mm, you do one side first. And I like using column B when I have one side that's kind of different than the other side. So this side, we have a simple curve happening here. And then on this side, we have these spikes coming out, all right? So it's less thinking on my part with a column B. Okay, once I get to the end, enter and get to the other side. And now I'm just tracing this other side Less thinking. Um, and then the only thing I'm going to have to set, because right now when I push enter, it's going to look all crazy. And I just have to set the stitch angles. All right. But once I set the stitch angles, uh, now I would say for 3D puff, you might have to be uh, mindful with these corners here, all right? Because you might have to uh, compensate for any gaps that are happening. All right, so here, our angles are all crazy. But we just set our angles. So here, zero. So you just set your angles. Really, we're just focused on these corners right there. And then bam. All right, cool. All right. And then H to look at this one. All right. Since we have our uh, butt joint right here, we'll have push in a tad bit. Okay, not too much. All right, but this one, very straightforward right here, especially for flats. If we're talking about flats, um, yeah, 3D puff, whole different situation, right? Really, you only have a uh, capping here, but you would have to be mindful for these corners right here, right? Making sure we don't get any cap, any gapping right there. Cool. All right. So those were some of the lessons learned. Uh, really, I would say if you were to practice, Digitizing, okay. Uh, really, the best the best designs to practice on are on. I would say, like real logos, like professional logos. I know what's happening right now. What's happening right now? This is just kind of like on a on a tangent. All right. What's happening right now is, as embroiderers, I see. I know. 
I know for us, we, we see this a lot. We'll get a design where we know a graphic designer didn't design it. Like it looks totally off. Uh, it's not symmetric or just looks off. And we know there's certain logos and certain text that's just not gonna look right for embroidery, okay? It might be like full color and you have, sometimes you gotta educate or inform the customers that there's certain logos that just doesn't work for embroidery, all right? So I like to, I like to push customers keeping their logos very basic. And the more basic, the, the, the better it actually looks, okay? Uh, so the best case scenario is to work with a customer that actually sent their file out, their, 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 their graphic designing out to an actual graphic designer, okay? And that's like best case scenario, you know, miracle happening there, okay? But just kind of be familiar with what can be done, what can be done, especially with 3D Puff. Sometimes customers want uh, files that cannot be done in 3D Puff, or you're going to have to remove a lot of the, the details. All right. Let me see this one. Oh, yeah. All right. All right. So that, that was a big lesson learned is that the best logos in the world, which to me, MLB logos are the best logos in the world. All right. They, they stand out, they look great, and they've passed the test of time. The best logos in the world are as basic as can be. Very straightforward. I would encourage you to, if you're trying to practice digitizing, digitize something that's already a known good, something that you can see and compare it. Okay. Sometimes you never know. You might digitize something better than the actual real one. Okay. Which I've seen. I've gone to certain stores, uh, outlet stores, where there you could tell the reason why a certain um, garment is in is in a, is in the outlet because you can look at the stitching and you could kind of be like oh this looks a little suspicious right here right all right um let me see if we got any questions here okay uh, all right oh wow got everybody in the house today all right all right uh oh I got big, big announcements to come down. All right, so March, all right, big events happening in March. Um, there's the Impressions Expo in Atlantic City, all right? So that's what, um, March, I'll be there March 25th, all right? Saturday, March 25th, I'll be there. That Saturday morning, I'm going live, all right? So mark that on your calendar. I'm going live March 25th, uh, live from Atlantic City, all right? So right before, I actually, uh, I'll be there on Friday, all right? I already got my uh, my room and everything ready to go, okay? So I'm going to set it up, ready to go live. Uh, Friday, I'll go check it out. Saturday morning, do the live, and then uh, Saturday all day, right, is all about doing research, uh, talking to all the vendors and just kind of learning everything, right? Everything there is. Um, the biggest emphasis is on garments. I'm really looking into uh, seeing all the vendors that are out there, okay? Some of my favorite vendors are gonna be there. Uh, so I'm excited about that. All right, so big thing happening there. All right, um, that's happening there. I'm still going live, right? I'm going live every first Saturday of the month. Okay, so the next one, uh, next Saturday will be April 1st. Oh, wow, on April Fool's Day, going live. So I'm going live on the 25th, and then the next week, April Fool's Day, April 1st, okay? Happening there. All right, so a lot of, lot, it's gonna be a busy March. Uh, I got a lot of videos lined up. If there's any specific videos that you want to see or that you want to recommend, I'm always open for recommendations. All right. Um, also, uh, last announcement, uh, the files, these files here, all right, which have been tested already. I sampled all these. All right. These that we kind of went over with, 
uh, available to the group members. So if you're a group member, uh, I want to thank you also if you're a group member. You just kind of uh, you really help offset a lot of the costs uh, just to kind of run um, the shows and, you know, a little sampling and little small stuff that kind of uh, expenses that occur. All right. So I do want to thank you. All right. Um, one thing that I'm going to start doing for the channel members, I'm going to start setting office hours and I have a phone, right? I have a new phone. Well, it's not new. It's my old one, but I'm going to use this old, this phone here specifically for, uh, uh, office hours chatting. So like video chatting, if you're a member, all right, I'm going to put out the hours where we could just chat. If you have like a quick question, they're going to be like 10 minute intervals of 10 minutes all right sometimes it's hard to answer questions okay uh, i get i probably average like 20 questions a day all right from every like different angles of areas and it's kind of hard to answer questions about embroidery because sometimes i have other follow-up questions like hey are you doing this or are you doing that are you are you what are your settings here what are your settings there okay uh, I think by doing a uh, video phone chat, sometimes it's easier than going back and forth on a message or on an email. So if you're a group member, um, easy, easy to get questions, right? I'm not going to say that I know everything I could, right? I, I know everything about embroidery, but I could give you kind of my perspective and give you my recommendations if you have like a quick question or something like that. All right. So look out for that. And um, yeah. March, right? March is already moving in. So we're going to have a busy, uh, we're going to have a busy, busy March. And one last thing, which is kind of in the tip of my mind right now. All right. Um, yeah. So see everybody, I'll see everybody live again. So mark it on your calendar. 25th, 8. I'm going to start early because I'm going to go on the show floor. So I'm going to start early, so look out for that. Might be 8, might be 7, might be 6 in the morning. I don't know if anybody wakes up early, all right? I wake up very, very early. You won't believe what time I wake up if I were to tell you. But 8 o'clock to me is nothing, all right? So if I start at 8, 7, all right, uh, we're going to have a very, very good uh, very good session that day, all right? So I do want to thank everybody for stopping by, for making the channel for what it is, all right? Uh, see you on the next one. Peace out everybody.